Hey everyone, welcome back! In this video I will show you how you can create a little fluffy guy like this. I found a concept art on ArtStation, link is in the description below if you want to take a look at it. In this first part we will model it, and then in the second part we will add the hair. So let's dive right in. Alright, so we are in Blender, and just to delete the default cube and then create a new UV sphere. For this one, you can just leave the settings as they are and rotate it around the x-axis in 90 degrees. That way, if you press numpad 1, you will have the same pattern facing forward. Now, you can swap into edit mode and go into edge selection mode to select a third edge loop um, from the middle of it. You can also choose like one smaller or bigger depending on how big you want the eye. And then you can use the bevel to basically create two loop cuts that are really close to each other and then extrude it outwards. This will be kind of this, this kind of pocket for our eye. Um, after that, you can also add a subdivision surface modifier to smoothen it out a little bit so it doesn't look so extreme when it goes outwards and we already have a perfect place for our eye. Um, what you also want to do is just do right click on the object in object mode and then shade smooth. All right, we are getting already pretty far. So next up, we want to create the mouth of the little guy. So just select the two faces below the eye and then scale them up a little bit so they get a little bit bigger and inset them so you have kind of this, this border around your selected faces. And then you can swap into vertex select mode and basically move the outer vertices a little bit around so you get the shape you want for the mouth. So for me, I just moved the top outer corners a little bit down uh, and then the middle one a little bit up. If you want to, if you have one vertice selected and you want to move it along an edge, you can just left click on it and then press twice G. This will kind of like move it, but only along a certain edge. So I'm kind of going like for a mouth that looks a little bit sad, um, which I thought was really suitable for that guy. And then um, as soon as you have the faces in the right position that you want them to be, you can select them again in face selection mode and then just extrude them inwards, so into the head. I extruded the area twice and then the second time I also scaled it up a little bit. Now because it's a little bit hard to see what is going on, you can always swap into the x-ray mode, so press Alt Set and then you can kind of view inside the head and then move it a little bit more around until you have like kind of the inside of a mouth. So from the outside it looks already pretty nice. Uh, I think for the head we can say that this is already a good point, so we can start creating the body of the guy. Let's first turn the head a little bit, so select it all with A and then rotate it around the x-axis. So if you're viewing it from the front view, you can see the eyes and the mouth perfectly. And then move it out of the way a little bit up, so G and Z, so we have a little bit of space for the body. Next, just create a cube again, which is going to be for our body. And then for this one, I'm going to use a subdivision surface modifier just to get a little bit more geometry. So in the modifier tab, add a subdivision surface modifier and give it a subdivision of two, which should be fine or enough to create some arms and legs. As soon as you have the right amount for the subdivision surface modifier, just apply the modifier so you have the geometry really to work with. And then what we're going to do is just jump into front view and then delete the left half of the mesh. So that way we can use a mirror modifier um, and we don't have to create like the arms for both sides. So just select the left part, then press X to delete it and add a mirror modifier and it should be already correctly mirrored. So back into solid view, we're going to start by creating the arms first going to select four of the faces that are kind of like on shoulder height, inset them a little bit and then extrude. And here you can basically just uh, go creative. It's basically just scaling and extruding. Now what you probably will recognize or realize is that it's quite squarish. So what I did is just selecting the outer vertices and scaled them in to make the arms a little bit more round. But um, the great thing about this is that, you know, it will all be covered in hair. So no one will really see like if you're messing up part of the modeling because it's like all the hair will cover most of the mesh. So you don't really have to worry about details very much, um, which is really great. So if you're not 
really great at modeling, yeah, that it's okay because you can just, you know, just cover it with a lot of hair and no one will notice. Um, so I realized that the arms might be a little bit too long, so I just selected some parts, moved them back, and um, didn't add much more detail like you can see, just uh, that. And then for the legs, it's basically the same. I wanted the legs to be quite short, so um, I'm just gonna select the bottom four faces again, extrude them out, again selecting the outer vertices to scale them in to make it a little bit more round. And then um, because I wanted the legs to be flat on the ground, uh, if you select the faces and then you scale set zero, that will make them completely flat and then you can extrude them out one more time to have those kind of legs and they will be perfectly standing on the ground, which is really nice for later on so we don't have to um, figure out how the guy is standing on the floor. Now, last thing for the body that I want to do is make sure that the the main body part is not looking like, you know, this round blob anymore. So especially the back that looks a little bit, a bit strange. So what I did is just enabled the proportional editing. So you click O or um, use the button on the top and then select one of the vertices and then just move them inwards. And with the mouse wheel, you can adjust kind of this circle around your mouse, which is defining on how much vertices around the one that you selected will get affected. And that way you can, you know, make the belly a little bit bigger, um, make the back part a little bit less round or a little bit more flat, and also pull the belly a little bit more outwards. So you have this little really tough, fat monster. <laughs> um, and then just move some parts around just to, so it doesn't look like a ball anymore. So as soon as you're ready we want to apply the mirror modifier so just go into object mode and then press ctrl a for the modifier or click the apply button and then also shade smooth the object by right clicking on it. Back into edit mode we want to move it up so select all and then grab set to move it up so the whole body is standing on the ground floor. Now we also of course have to move up the head so do the same there and then select the head first and then the body and then press ctrl j to join them so now they are one object now you will realize that the subdivision surface modifier is gone from the head so we're just going to add that one again um, maybe you also want to rename your objects and then tap into edit mode so now here we want to create basically the neck who's connecting the, the two so the body and the uh, head so what I did is just select four of the faces and inset them a little bit and then also select four faces on the bottom of the head. Uh, that might be just a little bit hard to like but to say but just to select a few of them and then you will see if they're kind of like in the middle or not. And then there's a tool that is called uh, bridge edge loops. So if you're pressing F3, you will see the search menu and then you can just search for bridge edge loops and that will create a connection between the two of them. So now we just need to move the head a little bit down. So in wireframe mode, select the head in a G set and then move that back down. Now, you don't necessarily need a neck here um, because like I said before, it's like a lot of it's gonna be covered in hair. So, um, you probably could have also just left the neck away and just dumped the, the head on there and it would be fine too because no one would really say that, that they're not really connected. So what you can do now is just a lot, adjust a little bit more um, some of the vertices by just moving them around, giving it a little bit more shape. And then uh, what we can finally work on is are the antennas. So just create a plane. And then in edit mode, select um, two of the vertices and then just remove those ones. So you will end up with one edge, so two vertices select um, connected. So with one of them selected, uh, snap it to the 3D cursor. This is nice because now we have the origin also at the right spot. And then in front view, just move the other one kind of like up so it's pointing upwards. And then in object mode, just move the whole thing up um, on top of the head. So here we're just gonna just move it like to the side so it's basically where you want the antenna to be. And then um, also make sure in side mode, uh, in side view, that it's kind of pointing upwards. And then with one vertice selected, you can just extrude it and bring it in this kind of um, antenna shape, however you want it to look. And then you can add a skin modifier. 
Now that will look a little bit ugly to be honest, but if you go into edit mode and select also A and then you press control A, you can scale that smaller. So that's quite nice. Um, then you might also want to add a subdivision surface modifier so it's not um, that squarey anymore. And then it's basically just a point of moving these things around. Now it's a little bit hard to see the vertices through the solid material of the solidify modifier so you want to use the x-ray version again so all set so you can see the mesh um, and how each vertice is affecting it so what I'm doing here is just selecting each of them and scaling them so the bottom one I want to be smaller so just control a to scale them smaller and the bigger one just scaling them a little bit bigger also with control a and then just giving it a little bit more of a kind of curve so it doesn't look that straight um, in the end, you want to create a duplicate of this, so in object mode, um, just duplicate it and then just move the second one a little bit more around so it does not look like the other one. So you want them to look a little bit different. If you're happy with how they look, you can apply the modifiers. So you first always want to apply the skin modifier and then the subdivision surface modifier. Um, so just click on them in the list and press Ctrl A to apply them for both of them. And then also for both of them in object mode, you want to shade them smooth so they look also um, not that rough anymore. All right, um, so with that, we basically have everything. We just want to add now a little bit more detail. So that means we want to add some teeth um, in the mouth so it doesn't look like completely empty. And also some toes. And the cool thing is we can just use the same object. So I just created a, a cube again. And then in X-ray mode, you can grab the top part, scale it a little bit together on the X axis, and then scale the whole thing generally a little bit smaller. Add a subdivision surface modifier again, so it smoothens it out again. Then scale the whole thing on the Y axis, so it's not that um, wide anymore. And now what you want might want to do is add some loop cuts, like if you're losing a little bit too much of the original shape um, through the subdivision surface modifier, you can add the loop cuts, like um, one in front and two in the sides to give this, this kind of like a little bit more um, shape there. So what we want here is basically this kind of triangle shape, which is going to be the teeth. Um, in the end, I'm just going to scale it a little bit more smaller and then it's just a part of positioning it correctly. So the best thing to do this is just going in front view and position it there where you want it to be. And then of course also scaling it um, in the correct size and then duplicating it again with shift A. Um, so making four teeth here. Of course the bottom one um, rotate 180 degrees so they're facing upwards and then selecting all four of them and just changing into the side view and then bringing them forward. So you'll see right now they're in the middle of the head and then you can just move them forward and rotate them. And then it's just like um, doing some, some final, you know, moving and rotating until they're uh, looking the right way. And because I'm sometimes a little bit lazy when it comes to modeling, I just use the same object as for the feet. So as soon as you have them positioned nicely, you can duplicate one of them again. And then the thing is only, it's like rotated in a weird way. So you just want to maybe straighten it up a little bit and then also scale it up. So it's a little bit bigger and then you can put it basically in front of the feet. So these will be kind of the, the toes or something. Um, so here again, it's just duplicating, scaling and rotating until it looks kind of um, nice. So it doesn't have to be perfect yet because as you see uh, in the second part, as soon as we add the hair, we anyway might want to adjust, for example, the thickness or um, how they're positioned. So right now you just want to get them basically in the right position so it looks okay. But it doesn't have to be perfect because you probably will still um, adjust it later a little bit more. So so don't go, go crazy about it. At this point, I thought my guy is still a little bit too tall. So what I wanted to do is kind of shrink him a little bit. So in front view and then wireframe, I just selected the, the top part 
and then with proportional editing enabled so O and then just grab Z to move it a little bit down um, just to, to get it a little bit more smaller and then just adjust the circle so it's kind of squeezing it all a little bit lower and then of course also putting the antennas lower again so they sit on the head so now we need an eye for the eye I used a YouTube tutorial from another youtuber um, it's a really nice tutorial because it's a procedural eye so what we can do is just um, copy that over I will add a link from that in the description below but um, if you just want to follow now this tutorial without creating the eye completely new um, I will also upload the file to my website link to that is also in the description so you can just download the eye file and then just add it like that all right for adding it um, I'm just gonna create a new collection so I have it all together in that one collection like right now I still have like a lot of objects that make it all a little bit confusing and if you go into the material preview you should see that the eye already has a material so right now it should look a little bit strange so it doesn't doesn't look like in the previous file and that is because we first have to enable some render settings so in EV just select screen splice refraction and click also enable refraction and that should show you the eye material and now it's basically just scaling and moving it to the correct spot so I just use S and G and maybe align tool uh, along some axis and just put it in the, in the eye socket we created before and with that we finished already the first part of this video so in the next part we can take a look at how we can create hair and how we can color it so i hope you guys enjoyed this video if so please leave a like and a comment also if you have any questions um, put that just down in the comments and i hope i have some time to answer them all and if you haven't please subscribe